Another day, another video about the Vancouver Canucks and their situation. Now, we've been kind of hinting at it the past few videos with different talks about what the team is doing differently, just the perspective that a lot of fans have on the team. We've been reviewing some of the games, and to be honest, you know, there's another game later today. They're playing the Arizona Coyotes, but I'm not going to be able to watch it. As I said in a prior video earlier this week, I'm just kind of exhausted watching Canucks hockey, and so I've got drop-in community center hockey later tonight, and we'll see what happens after that is complete. Once my hockey concludes and I get home, the Canucks game will likely be ending at around the same time, so who knows if I'm going to find the willingness to make another post-game video like the one we had done when the Canucks played the Dallas Stars on Tuesday. I didn't watch that one either because I had volleyball. So, yeah, I'm kind of going outside doing my own thing, just trying to ease into a regular routine of being active and freeing my mind from all of the tribulations of the past few days. Either way, though, there is a new conversation that I wanted to talk about here regarding the Vancouver Canucks, and it all revolves around the playoffs. Because, if you take a look at this post made on the R Hockey subreddit by Sahil910, the Vancouver Canucks have a five-game winning streak, they're 8-2-1 in their last 11, and they're also currently projected to have the easiest schedule remaining on tankathon.com. And this is where we start to do the math. Let's go to Tankathon. The link is included in this Reddit post. I'll, by the way, leave a link in the description to the Reddit post itself. But going over to the Tankathon's NHL remaining schedule strength article, not even article, but just page, it goes over the entire National Hockey League and it describes which teams have the easiest opponents and the toughest opponents remaining in their schedule. It appears here, based off of the page, that the Ottawa Senators have themselves the most difficult schedule to end off 22-23. They play the Bruins once, the Hurricanes twice, the Devils once, the Leafs twice, the Lightning twice, and the Colorado Avalanche once. They've got 15 games left, and they only really have five games against easy opponents. Columbus, Philadelphia, Buffalo, and Florida, if you want to say Florida's easy this year. This entire list goes on until the end, where the Vancouver Canucks have an easier schedule compared to everybody in the East, and the only team apparently with an easier schedule is Colorado. The Canucks play the Golden Knights once, the Kings three times, the Stars once, and the Kraken once, and those are their only games listed here as difficult games. They're playing the San Jose Sharks once, the Ducks twice, the Blackhawks twice, the Coyotes twice, the Blues once, and then the Flames twice as well. So, they've got a boatload of games against quote-unquote easy teams. And as we have seen the past few weeks, the Canucks can very well beat a good chunk of these teams. They're not difficult opponents for Vancouver. Then you have yourselves another list on this Reddit post. They have the third easiest schedule, according to Power Rankings Guru. With Demko returning the form, he's 5-1. and one. He's got a 9 to 8 save percentage since returning from injury, and Hronik may be returning very late season. The Canucks look poised for a late season push for 17th to 22nd overall and out of a top pick. Yeah, we knew this would happen. We really did, but now it's like, okay, their schedule is so easy compared to almost everybody else in the West, everybody else in the Pacific, it's easiest, period, and they've been on a little bit of a tear recently, okay. If we go over to Tankathon's regular page, you can see that the Vancouver Canucks currently have the odds for the ninth overall pick in the 2023 draft, but if you take a look at where they are in the wildcard race right now, I mean, look, the Vancouver Canucks are, what is that? Okay, they're quite a ways away from the wild card, honestly. Like, okay, the Winnipeg Jets have 79 points, the Canucks have 63. So that is the distance between Vancouver and the final wild card spot. But as we've been looking at the past few games here, the Jets have been struggling quite a lot. 3-5-2 and two in their last 10 games. The Canucks are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 games. So definitely a much stronger past few weeks here for Vancouver compared to Winnipeg. Now, 16 points is a big gap to fill, though. 100%. Like, you have to go out there and, at the very least, win 8. 
and the Vancouver Canucks have 16 games remaining, so they have to, at the very least, go 500 to even have a chance at sniffing the playoffs, and that's assuming Winnipeg doesn't go out there and win any more games, period. The Canucks are probably looking at some sort of a miracle run if they want to make the playoffs, but, of course... If you went out there and asked, I think a lot of Canucks fans would say, yeah, no, we're not making the playoffs this year. Are you kidding me? Well, they have been on a tear lately, and they do have one of the easiest schedules in the entire league to go to end off 22-23. So what in the world is going to happen here? This is the top comment on the subreddit post. Dread it. Run from it. The Vancouver Canucks with the 10th overall selection arrives all the same. Then they trade that selection for a middle six forward to help them be competitive next season. And yeah, that happens. It does, doesn't it? And that's kind of why I use the Doomer face in the thumbnail of this video, because it's like, yeah, this cycle of... I'm not gonna lie, it's mediocrity. It really is, because like the finish in the standings, if you take a look at where the Canucks are projected to finish based off of their performance in the last few weeks and the quality of their competition to remain... This team finishing just outside the wild card wouldn't be all too surprising. This team going from 9th overall in the draft lottery sweepstakes to maybe 12th or 13th or 14th or 15th like last year, that's not impossible based off of how this team has been performing under talk. And we had talked yesterday about how they've been performing pretty well and they've changed up a lot of their structure. And now with the new talk at bump, it's essentially the same story as Bruce Boudreau last year. It's just... Can you really predict if the Vancouver Canucks are going to be terrible, absolute dog water to start out the season next season like they did this year? Who really knows how many blown leads this team is going to have to kick off 2023-2024? But at the end of the day, this Vancouver Canucks squad is still a ways away from making the playoffs. They have to, at the very least, win eight out of their remaining 16. I'm going to go out there and even up the stakes, maybe... 10 or 11 out of their remaining 16 if they want to even have a chance at making it, assuming the Winnipeg Jets and these other teams sort of fall out of the standings race a little bit more. Maybe, though, the Vancouver Canucks finally get lucky once. Maybe they actually end off the season on a pretty good hot streak. They get maybe the 12th or 11th overall odds, and then they win the lottery. Who really knows? This team has had such bad luck when it comes to their lottery success the past few years, so maybe they're due. Maybe. If you want to believe the NHL draft lottery is rigged, it's written in the stars, it's locked in Gary Bettman's safe in his bedroom or whatever, then maybe Vancouver does get themselves bedard. They get themselves the hometown guy, and for once, they actually come out on top. Who knows, though? Thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks. Are they going to make the playoffs? You can let me know your opinions on that in the comments. But do you really think this schedule is going to help Vancouver into doing so? Do you think the Sharks, the Ducks, the Coyotes, the Blackhawks, they have what it takes to take down this Vancouver team that has been really hot the past little while? They've been playing well. I'm not going to go out there and dispute that. I'm not going to watch the game later today against Arizona because, as I said, I have my own things to attend to. But if everything is worth talking about when I get home and I'm all sweaty and I have to take a shower and everything, then maybe we'll talk about it. We'll see. If the Canucks really don't put on a showcase that's actually worth discussing, then okay, I guess we're not going to talk about it because I already said it this week, but I'm not really in the best mindset to be watching a lot of games, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens, but thoughts in the comment section either way, all your opinions about the Canucks in the playoffs, do you think they make it, do you think they're going to miss out? I hope you enjoyed this video, and bye.